lighting people and welcome to a special live version of Five Big Questions. We're here in front of the Legrand booth, the plug and pour lounge at Light Fair 2023. And we're joined by two presidents of different lighting brands. We're here with Jim Lee Bino, the president of Focal Point, and Dave Michaels, the president of Canal. Jim Lee, Dave, thanks so much for being here. Dave, how's the show going so far? One hour in, very exciting. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of traffic, a lot more traffic than I actually anticipated. The plug and pour lounge is hopping. You haven't started pouring the adult beverages yet, but there's been lots of traffic, so glad for that, Dave. And Jim Lee, let's start the real business discussion with you. Um, you've been involved in architectural brands for a long time, formerly president of OCL, another LeBron brand, now president, of course, of Focal Point. And when you consider what it takes to be a successful manufacturer in the space of architectural lighting, in the past it used to be just have good, good quality products, good spec tools, um, but now it feels like there's so much more involved with well buildings and declare labels and software tools and everything else. Tell us, what does it take to succeed like Focal Point has in that architectural lighting space now? I, I think you have to be very close to the customer and really understand. One of the things that we have in our um, brand is we talk about to anticipate. And you talked about the declare label and sustainability. And I think for many people, that was a reactive thing. How are we going to respond to sustainability? But if you look at Legrand, that's part of their ethos. And we've been doing it for over 10 years. And our last roadmap, we're focusing on things like circular economy, uh, climate change, DEI, and also you know, just being a good business. And so when I think about it, I first wanna say that we're already ahead of some of those tool sets and we share the values of our customers. So I think on the second part of what tools, you know, obviously the declare label with our acoustics, I mean, I think it's all really important. I remember being a competitor of Focal Point and I hated it because you folks seem to get a lot of praise from the specification community. Even when I would go to the IALD and ask them which websites are your favorites, the specifiers would frequently tell us that Focal Point does a really good job on that. And I know you still do. So uh, from that standpoint, it's great. And then Dave, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the, cause some of the product stuff. One, Indigo Clean is a name that a lot of people have heard of in recent years, but it goes back to actually 2016 and it's a 405 visible, 405 nanometer visible light disinfection technology. And a lot of people learned about it during the pandemic, but it's been around a long time. So when you look at that market right now and you look at before, during and after the pandemic, what does the disinfection lighting market look like? So before the pandemic, uh, Indigo Clean, the, the first visible light disinfection. It's kind of crazy that, yeah, we launched that at uh, 2015 at a healthcare show called APIC. The first handful of years was really uh, justifying the technology, showing the ROI, because it's a big investment to address infection within hospital spaces. It's not a light fixture, it's a disinfecting device. So pre-COVID, it was all about what, uh, how many solid state infections can you reduce for this doubling of the cost of the OR, because that's what it was back then. During COVID, the Mount Sinai study kind of, we were always talking bacteria. It actually kills uh, SARS-CoV-2. It also kills influenza. So all of a sudden it became very exciting during COVID that we had something that actually killed the virus that was causing the pandemic. So really uh, surgical focus early healthcare focus, but now you're starting to see it. Actually, Focal Point is, has launched Indigo Clean in their product line. The, uh, in fact, the whole uh, lighting sector, all the brands have access to the licensing from Kennel. So we're seeing it in office spaces. You're seeing it in schools. Who knew that MRSA was so prevalent in weight rooms? Uh, but it's, we're seeing a lot of uh, fitness centers using it. So it's really expanded from way back in 2015 when really we only lived in ORs. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And yeah, you folks have been playing in healthcare for a long time. But now, you, speaking of the Focal Point website, you go to the Focal Point website, one of the top menu items is healthcare. And, and of course, we see that in Pinnacle Architectural and your other sister brands as well. So that, that's good. And I think you're right. People need to think about disinfection lighting, not just for a pandemic. There's MRSA and some of those other things you mentioned. And then, you know, Jim Lee, transitioning back to you, you mentioned earlier something about your acoustic products. And I've seen numerous installations of your products. and. 
sometimes I do kind of the quick math and I'm looking at the projects and it's like, so there's one light fixture and then there's a non-lit non acoustic. And non it feels like sometimes the projects could be a lot of non-illuminated panels as well. Tell me, how has the acoustic business affected your business and what you know, you're now dealing with interior designers maybe a lot more than you used to? How, does, how is Focal Point able to kind of bring that into the, to the realm and be successful at it too? Well, so my background is interior design. So the fact that we're paying attention to interior designers brings me great joy. <laughs> but they've always been um, a key customer to, me, customer to me, even when I was in an agency kind of uh, responsibility and role. And the reason why is because nobody cares about that interior space like they do, right? The colors, the textures, the quality of being in that space. So when you think about it, lighting was one avenue where we could really enrich all those things. But then when open ceilings came, we had a whole different problem because it was beautiful, but suddenly it was loud and disruptive. And so now we can take those two pieces, those two elements and help the designer solve for those. And, and a neat part about it is that, you know, when they're solving for it, they can do it in a very quiet way or we can make some beautiful, wonderful statements and change how that whole space feels. And when we do it with the Declare label, then everybody feels good about it because it's better for you than drywall. Is, for you sure. Know? <laughs> so that's kind of. And I love hearing you articulate that as far as making a statement or maybe having it blend. It's, it, which is a lot of times, you know, we have the the actual light fixtures that are different colors. Do you see that, you know, with a, like a light fixture is 90% of them or more are white? Do you see a particular popular color on the acoustics or is it all over the map? <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> we have all these wonderful colors yeah. and they're used. Yeah. However, gray is the, you know, that's the one everybody wants and it's, yeah. you know, we get frustrated, we update it. In September, you're going to see a launch of something else from us, um, including our acoustics and our natural materials, but really going after a more biophilic feel. Excellent. Um, so, but we don't want to spoil that yet. We won't, we okay. won't. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So the audience is, is uh, we'll wait with bated breath until, <laughs> until the fall for that. And, and, and Dave, we, we talked earlier about your presence in healthcare, but, but Ken All also notoriously has a strong presence in clean rooms and other specialty food preparation and other areas as well. Um, when you look at the markets right now, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. The pandemic actually didn't cause a huge decline, but now people are either experiencing one or predicting one. How are you seeing things in CNI markets right now? We're definitely seeing a softening of orders. Unlike 08, where there wasn't projects, there's a plethora of projects out there. They just can't get off a standstill. They're just slow to move, uh, uh, delays that were unexpected. For Kennel, uh, what we also saw in 08 that we'll see here is we're a little insulated. Healthcare is always going. Yeah. Behavioral health is always going. You've said, you've said all of them, correctional. The infrastructure bill has actually uh, lit a fire under our transportation line. We're seeing a lot of transportation activity across North America. So, although a little softening, pretty optimistic for the uh, remainder of the year. That's, that's great to hear, and I, I guess I hadn't connected the dots about the, in, the infrastructure yes. affecting, in, in a good way, your business Absolutely. as well. So, uh, so it's not just for, for street lighting, that's, uh, that's for sure. So yeah, that's great. it's actually, yeah. the tunnels is where we live. So I am so glad that we're getting plugged in to Legrand and Kennel and Focal Point, but we're at the Plug and Pour Lounge. Legrand has a Plug and Pour Lounge here at Light Fair 2023. We've gotten all plugged in, but we haven't poured anything. Has anyone poured anything? Can we have something poured? We have, oh, yes. look at, we have Stephanie what from Focal Point. Oh, this is fantastic. Um, it, it is the morning when we're recording this, but that's not stopping us from enjoying a port. Stephanie, thank enjoy, you so much. Enjoy. Sounds good, excellent. Well, uh, cheers to, uh, to your success and to all this excellent information. We have one more question, so don't go away. Um, we're here at Light Fair, and everyone in the industry has either been to Light Fair or is aware of Light Fair, and sometimes has even talked about Light Fair in a different way than we used to, but when this show was attracting 25 plus thousand people, a lot of people are really grateful that you're here, including me. So thank you for exhibiting. But why was it um, important? And Jim Lee, I'll ask you, why was it important for Legrand or your brands to be here at Light Fair? It wasn't our original plan. And, um, but we've always been a strong partner with the IES and ILD. And we received a letter that explained to us how important it was to be here. And so we all put our hand in fire and we're like, we're doing this. And now we are so thankful. I mean, look at, I mean, if you look behind us, the crowd is just thick. The um, ILD has like 450 lighting designers here present. So I think we were doing it 
to support the industry for the good of it, but in the end, it's really helping us, and so we're thankful for that. You know, that's what they call a win-win, right, Dave? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's exciting, and, and the, the specifiers are here. They've, I've already, even though we're very short into the show, I saw a lot of big-name specifiers already perusing uh, your booth, so um, thank you for supporting the IAS, the IALD, and Lightfair, and thank you for being here, and thank you also for joining us today for Five Big Questions. It was a pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. Though. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Hey there, we really enjoyed that discussion. We hope that you did as well. Be sure to click that big LED logo next to me and what that'll do is subscribe you to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next five big questions interview. And YouTube subscribers always receive an early preview to the next interview before we even post it on the Inside Lighting website. Thanks and we'll see you next time.